Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Stay tuned for part three of our Serger Basics series. Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. If you want to take your sewing to the next level, you are in the right place today. Thank you so much for joining us. So we're in the middle of a serger series, um, basics of sewing with a serger. So the first week I went over all the different parts of a serger, kind of all the terms that are used and what it does and what it's good for. In the second video, I did a little serge along, uh, sewing a classic T on the serger so you could see it in practical use. So for the third video, I'm going to tie up loose ends and there are just a few more things I want to tell you about serging and basically today I want to talk about all the stitches that the serger does and some we've already gone over but there's a few decorative things and, and that that I want to show you today. So let's talk about stitches. So first of all, um, the basic stitches that you've already seen, we've talked about the two thread overlock. The two thread overlock is used for overcasting seams or it can be done uh, used for a ruled hem. But it isn't really good for much more than that with only two threads. That was the like early, early sergers were able to do that. So the three thread overlock is getting into something that we can actually use as a seam. However, you want to take care not to use that on any seam that's going to be stressed a lot. The four thread overlock is what most of us have capability to do, and it can sew a double line of stitching overlapping with the loopers and uh, making a very nice complete seam that's already made neat with the uh, looper threads. Now on to some fun things it can do. I'm going to give you the list rundown here and then talk about each one individually. You can use your serger to gather. Okay, you can make ruffles or you can use it to apply elastic in order to gather like a waistband. You can also blind hem with it or do a flat lock stitch. And if you don't know what a flat lock stitch, it's basically um, is a really neat kind of effect that looks like it's gone over like they're little bridges. Each step is like a little bridge between the two layers of fabric and they butt up to each other like that. And the other one is a rolled hem. So I'm going to be talking about each one of these and going over how it's done. So let's start with gathering with elastic. So this little dress that I made last week, I gathered the waistline with elastic. Now let me show you the finished edge here. Since this is for a child and it's going to be pulled on and off and tugged this way or that, I actually reinforced this with elastic and I used that to do the gathering. And as you can see, it's going to be very, very durable. So let's go to the machine here. So for gathering with the elastic, you don't have to change any settings on your serger at all. All you need to do is to cut a length of elastic a couple inches longer than the area that you need to cover with elastic. And then you just want to let that hang over the edge and then just serge it down just a little bit, as you can see in my illustration here. Serge it down just a little bit and then once you know it's secured underneath that needle then you can start to pull and you just pull gently and as you do the fabric is ruffled and it'll uh, hold up and you're able to then stretch it to put it onto the waistband and it's very durable. For gathering, that's something that, uh, let's say you want to make a huge tiered dress. I mean, this is going to save you so much time. Or you just want to make some ruffles of a contrast fabric to put on uh, the end of a skirt or something. Really, really great thing to be able to do for little girls. So you could go buy an expensive ruffle foot for your 
sewing machine or you could just change a few things on your serger to make it ruffle. So basically what you need to do, you can stick with a four thread serger. On your settings, you're gonna increase your differential feed and um, so that will make it go through faster and give it a little bit of ruffling. And then you're gonna keep your stitch length between three and four. And then what you're gonna do is uh, choose about two and a half for the stitch width. And then the thing that makes it all happen is the tension. The needle tension needs to be put up somewhere between six and eight. And then we're going to just go ahead and sew the ruffles. And you can see that would save a lot of time. The next stitch is a blind hem. So it's not super blind, I will say that. But it's basically just catching the edge as you serge. And so what ends up happening is that if it's a print or something with a little bit of a nap, it hides really nicely. But if it's just like a quilting cotton or something, it's gonna show pretty much a lot. So what I would say is, you know, this would be a nice quick hem on a knit garment that maybe has a print and you're not gonna see the stitches as much. Um, on a solid t-shirt, I wouldn't do it, but um, it is another alternative for hemming. I have never used it for hemming, but you can do that. You don't. So the blind hem is a three thread stitch. So you're gonna take the right needle out so that you have uh, the left needle doing all the work. And you're gonna put your differential feet at normal, your stitch length at normal. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna set your needle tension down to zero, between zero and two. And the lower looper you're gonna turn down as well to between two and four. And the upper looper you wanna leave the same. So then you're just going to uh, fold it so that it's folded up once and then back on itself again so that you have a little edge sticking out. Now, it's best to press it. Um, for the purposes of demonstration, though, I'm kind of doing this quick. I did use some pins, and as long as they're over to the side, you can let them go right through the serger, as long as they're not where the needle is or the blade. So then you're just gonna go ahead and sew that. Um, and then when you get to the end, you're going to see that you have a really pretty nice blind hem. Truthfully, that's something I have not done a lot of, but it is doable, and a lot of people do like to do their hems that way. The next stitch is a flat lock, and basically you would use this maybe as something decorative. You could also use it as a hem with it kind of showing in a decorative way on the outside. You're actually serging two pieces of cloth together and then once you have them sewn, you open it up and then the flat lock stitch is visible. So this is a three thread operation <laughs> and your differential feed will be normal for this one. Your stitch length between two and two and a half. Now as far as tension, the upper looper is going to decrease to one to three. The needle is also one to three, and then the lower loop will kind of stays the same as always. Now you're just gonna go ahead and sew those together. And then when you open them up, you can see you have a pretty cool looking flat lock stitch. The place where this might be used is like a uh, I don't know, a bag or something where you want to almost create a patchwork effect. You, you could use a decorative thread in the loopers and then it would show through and be really decorative as well. The last stitch I want to talk about is the rolled hem. And this is something that I use a lot and I think most people who have a serger tend to use a lot. The way this is done is a little bit different on each machine, so you're gonna to wanna to consult your manual. 
I will show you how I do it, but your manual for your surgery probably will have um, a few other steps um, creating the situation where you have a rolled hem. So the settings on mine for a rolled hem, the basically the settings um, stay almost the same. Once in a while, I will decrease the upper loop retention just so that it is looser and kind of all the threads kind of go to the back. And then I will also um, shorten the stitch length a bit so that um, it's closer together and it looks more like a satin stitch on the edge. For this one, you are using only the right needle and the loopers. So it is also a three thread stitch, but without the left needle. And then you need to drop the stitch finger and that's done in different ways on different machines. Um, the two I've had are not even close to the same. So I'm going to just tell you to check your manual. Um, in mine, there's a lever that actually just drops it out of the way and causes the um, fabric to sort of roll as it's going under the needle. So check your manual and it will be probably spelled out clearly for you in there, the steps that you need to do to uh, set it up for rolled hemming. And then you just sew on the edge. As you can see, it makes a super nice little edge for chiffons and things that are um, delicate, um, things that if you hemmed it might show through. So that's a really great finish for something like that. Another thing you can do with a knit is as you're doing a rolled hem, I would not make the stitch length super, super close together for this, but what I would do is just stretch the fabric a little bit and you'll get a little lettuce edge, which is kind of cool as well. All right, so those are the stitches I have to talk about today. There's no way to really um, teach this without you know giving you the information and then you're just gonna have to play with it consult your serger manual because like I said everyone is a little bit different in how the, the stitch finger is dropped a lot of people will uh, get the blade out of the way as well I don't do that um, I just make sure that I don't go over far enough to cut it but you know there is a on some sergers that will tell you to uh, just roll the blade out of the way now somebody in the comments on my last serger video asked me to show her how I thread my awful, awful old serger. It's not an awful serger, it's just awful to thread. So I decided to do that. I'm going to show this to you. I'm also just going to tell you that um, it's even harder to do from the side so that the camera can see. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's, you're, this is like a negative commercial for a, a non-air threaded serger, but it isn't really as bad as this looks, but it is kind of uh, laborious, I guess. Is that a word? Laborious? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> anyway, um, enjoy. Uh, I think maybe somebody wanted to see just how hard it actually was, and so here you go. <laughs>
All right, so if, the, if you're not pulling your hair out by now <laughs> watching that video, um, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, if you like this video and you'd like to see more, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Click that little bell so you get notified. Like and share and comment. Thank you so much for everything. Have a fabulous day. I'll see you soon. Happy sewing.